the the other option and uh, and that is you start off with zero and zero. So here, you know, you don't want to do this. If you do this, your calculator is going to fail. Basically, you don't want to. Uh, do a precipitation because usually the precipitation percent precipitations are high. It's like ninety nine point nine 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 nine, and then your calculator is going to round it to one hundred percent precipitation. And, but which is okay. You start here, and then you have to start over again, basically, to figure it out. You know. Um, so uh, it's easier just to reset initially. Uh huh. Uh, can we go over forty seven on the reset? Yeah. Uh, forty seven. Can you read out? Uh, or, or, or I'll, I'll bring it up here. Oh yeah, uh, this is supposed to be two S, two times the same. Right. Yeah, that's correct. It should be two S, solve for S, and then. You solve by using the GOHPSP. Yeah, right. The KSP would be would have been given on the board or on a sheet. What's wrong with the projector here? Okay, uh, number 47. Uh, number 47, the solubility of magnesium hydroxide in a particular buffer solution is 0.65 grams per liter. What must be the pH of the buffer solution? You need to combine the concentration of hydroxide. Hmm? So I guess my question is on the book, they use the solubility, so they give you the solubility of MgOH. Yes. And they break it up into the they get the, the um, similarity of the magnesium from there. Okay. Why can't you do the same thing with the hydroxide? So, for that one? Okay. Uh, let me see if I'm okay. understanding the, that. So, uh, why can't you use the hydroxide to get the concentration of magnesium from it? Or? It gives me the solubility of the, the whole compound, right? All right. Well, well, well Let's stop right there. Do they give you the solubility in water or the solubility in the hydroxide? At that hydroxide? In the buffer. In the buffer solution. So they, basically, um, well, let me just show you what, uh, what I would do here. I would say there's nothing dissolved, but this is a buffer solution. The buffer solution has some kind of pH to it. And so there's gonna be some high, kind of hydroxide called initial. But, you know, since it's a buffer, the hydroxide initial is the same as the hydroxide final. So this is the same thing. Why are we adding more base? No, a buffer is going to have base in there or acid. I don't know. It could be uh, acidic or it could be basic. You know, we don't know. But any solution is going to have hydroxide in there. This is why, you know, did you add hydroxide to your um, lead iodide? Yesterday, so where did the hydroxo complex come from? AW. Yeah, water, and so this hydroxide always present. And so here uh, we're going to get the solubility here. This is what we're solving for, right? And so, um, well, we know that the KSP is going to equal the magnesium times hydroxide squared. So it's going to be S hydroxide squared, which would be initial. And then um, they, they give us S, right? We don't have to, uh, S is given as 0.65 grams per liter, so we just change that into moles per liter. 
And so that's our molarity here. The molar solubility would plug that in here and then just solve for the hydroxide here. That's what I would, uh, would do in this particular problem. But you, you, you're saying they solve for the solubility? No, no, no. They do the same thing you do. Okay. I'm saying, why can't you use the, the molarity of, like S? Why can't you use S in hydroxide? You mean 2s? This would yeah, be 2s? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, okay. So you're, you're saying, why can't you do that? Because um, so this, you, you, you can't, you can't because they aren't fixed at that ratio. So for example, if I have this, this is what I know for PBI2. PBI2 goes to PB2 plus, plus two iodides. So any kind of Lead and any kind of iodide is going to happen in a, in a one to two ratio, right? A one to two ratio. Problem is, if you start off with 0.1 molar here, then at the end, are they going to be in a one to two ratio? No, you're going to have a lot more iodide here at the end, and it's not going to be a one to two ratio. And so this is why I said, you know, um, in, this, in the second problem we did yesterday, I said sum up the lead concentrations. If you sum up the iodide concentrations, then what you have to do is you take the iodide concentrations and you subtract the original 0.1 from that to figure out how much iodide actually came from lead 2 iodide. Because 0.1 of that came from potassium iodide. And so you can't do that here. You can't put it into 2S because we have the original hydroxide in here already and it, the hydroxide isn't going to be in that ratio at the end during the change yes it's going to be there and so what, what, what we're going to have here is at the end of this it's going to be the initial hydroxide plus 2s and so you can't just call it 2s it's going to be initial hydroxide plus 2s then you could do that but it's a buffer solution so it's going to buffer that plus 2s and then just make it back to the original hydroxide you can't, so you can't use the hydroxide. Like if, if you add more hydroxide, then the acidic portion of the buffer would neutralize it. Yes, right, exactly. And to try to maintain, we're just going to assume it just maintains a constant pH. All right. Because uh, the buffer region in a citation is relatively flat anyway. Yeah, it's pretty flat, um, the buffer region. It, uh, although, you know, it still goes up, you know, between uh, pretty much a gr greater than it's minus one, plus one, actually beyond that range. So it's not totally flat. Uh, there are going to be minor pH changes. But, but, but that's simple. But, yeah, it makes a life simpler if you can just say that. The thing is, it would be completely flat if you had an extremely high capacity buffer. You know, if you had an extremely high capacity buffer, then it's going to make no impact on the base to acid ratio, which means it maintains a constant pH. Constant pH? But, so you know, no point, you know there, there are limits to how high a buffer capacity you can have because of molarity, you know, solubility, how, how, how soluble are the species. Like, you know, can you make 160 molar HCl? <laughs> Is that possible? No, just like you can't make 160 molar of acetic acid. How about if you mix 100 uh, molar um, hydrochloric with 17 molar glacial acid? Then you, you you have a strong acid weak acid mixture. That would be a buffer, right? How how many molar hydrochloric? 12. 12. And yeah. the other 17. No, it would not not be a buffer because both are acids. And acids want to both do the same thing. And so if you have HCl or HAC, then which one is the base? Neither. Both want to donate protons. Neither are amphoteric. And so it's not a buffer. It would just be an acid mixture. Acid mixture. OK, other questions? Yes, number 11, no number homework. Which is more soluble in acid than water? No, number 11. Oh, on the homework? Okay. Yeah. That's right, on the homework. Right oh. there. You can find another leader to put. That was here, that's what it is. Right there, right there, where I'm pointing. 
25 milliliters of clear saturated solution of PBI2 requires 13.3 milliliters of a certain silver nitrate for its titration. What is the molarity of this silver nitrate EQ? So we could have, uh, this is metathesis titration. Uh, metathesis titration, redox titrations, and acetase titration. So the titration, you, you have to have some kind of um, endpoint. In this particular titration, the endpoint would just be, uh, you'd see a precipitate. You know, you need a certain amount, like a milligram of precipitate to be able to see it. So, so um, we can figure it out from that. And so, um, what is the molarity of this silver nitrate? And so, uh, 25 milliliters of clear saturated PBI2. How do you find the molarity of the PBI2? Well, from KSP, because this is just a pure, you know, PBI2 in water solution. I know, but I have a question about their conversions. The conversions? Yeah, why can't you go directly from moles of um, uh, silver, silver nitrate? No, um, lead iodide to moles of silver nitrate. Directly. Um, because the iodide is in a two uh, to one ratio. So if you have one more conversion factor in there where you convert from moles of lead iodide to moles of iodide, then that works. Basically, it's this. The solubility, how many moles of PBI2 we can dissolve in water will be equivalent to the moles of um, PBI2 plus, but it would be one half the iodide. Because the iodide is twice as concentrated. And so you cannot go directly from PBI2 to iodide because it's sort of in, in a two to one ratio or a one to one half of variation. Wait, no, I'm saying um, to go from to go from lead iodide, like to go from lead iodide to silver nitrate. That's one to one. Why can't you do that? It's not because um, because uh, the iodide and the silver are in a one to one ratio. It's a one to one mole ratio. Uh -huh. This is a one to one half mole ratio or a two, two to one mole ratio. Uh -huh. In other words, the convert if you just use your conversion factors, you'll be fine in this particular problem. This is a dimensional analysis problem. You know, for a dimensional analysis problem, I know a lot of people, they just um, don't make sure the units cancel out. But if, if you just made sure that you didn't cancel out, then let out of that to silver nitrate the right thing or something, or the other way around, and then got like a funky answer. Well, let's just set it up. PBI two goes to PB two plus plus two iodides, and so this is there's nothing in here, so it's just water. And so we got you know S molar and two S molar like we set up earlier. Then um, we solve for S right because the KSP. It's going to equal the PB2 plus times the iodide squared. And so this is going to be S times 2S quantity squared, which is going to be 4S cubed. And then we solve for F. Right. S is the molarity of lead to iodide. And so we solve for S. And then what we have to do is that's going to give us the mole of PBI2 you know, how, however much broke off from the crystal and dissolved in water per liter. That's what we're gonna get from that. Which was 1.2 times 10 to the minus three, three was it? Yeah. Uh, this is fairly soluble. Okay, now what we know is how many moles of PBI2. Now we're gonna do some conversion factors here. We know that for every one mole of PBI2, how many moles of I you get I minus. You get two moles of I minus. So the moles of PBI2 cancels out the moles of PBI2 and leaves you with moles of I. And then for every one mole of I, how many moles of silver? One. It's a one to one mole ratio. So we cancel out the moles of I, it leaves us with moles of silver. And then we're after moles of silver nitrate. So we have one more, or you could skip some if you wanted to, but uh, we see that for every one mole of silver, there is one mole of silver nitrate. 
that we Because did. they react in a one-on-one ratio, right? Right, but do you see the, where the two comes from? You can't go straight. Otherwise, you, you missed that. You can't go straight from lead iodide to silver nitrate. Without this two. There's got to be a two here. You can't go straight from here to there. It doesn't work. There's a two here because of the mole ratios. Okay. That's fine. And so uh, that's the reason why they didn't. Yeah, you, you just work out, make sure the units cancel out and then it'll be okay. All right, uh, other question? Uh huh. Number 40. Number 40. Which one of the following solutions can be used to separate the cations in an aqueous solution in which barium and calcium peak flux are 0.050 molar? And so we have a sodium chloride, sodium sulfate, sodium hydroxide, and sodium carbonate. Explain why. Positive analysis. Um, yeah. Well, let's take a look at the first one. Um, this one, you know, ignore the number. Just look at chloride. Yeah, it, it, uh, they're both, both side. I'll eliminate that. Sulfate. Barium. Sulfates are all soluble except for silver, which is borderline. Lead, which is highly insoluble. Lead two. Mercury one and mercury two. Calcium, strontium, barium. So sulfate could be used to precipitate both. Um, hydroxide, well, hydroxides are all insoluble except for group one, ammonium, calcium, strontium, barium, so we eliminate hydroxide. Carbonate, um, carbonates are all insoluble except for group one and ammonium, so carbonate could be used. So it's between um, sodium sulfate and a sodium carbonate. And um, looking at the concentrations, I would go with uh, probably carbonate. So you can precipitate on more? 10 times the concentration. Um, but which one of the following can be used to separate? Uh, both of them can be used to separate. You know, but how effective is it? You know, and so, so they aren't asking us if it's going to be a complete separation or a partial separation. Uh, I guess if they're saying separate, they probably mean complete. And so what we do is we compare the KSPs. Um, you see both of these split up the same way because it's two cations, one anion, two cations, one anion. If these both split up the same way, then we just compare the KSP values for the sulfates and the carbonates. And what we want is we want a bigger difference. A bigger difference in the KSPs would make it easier to separate. Uh huh, Kelly. The, the, uh, this problem is dealing dealing with fractional uh, precipitation. Exactly, fractional precipitation. Uh, and so the bigger the difference in the sol both of them are insoluble, but um, calcium and uh, barium. Um, Except we want a big difference, you know, like one is a lot more soluble than the other, then it'd be a lot easier to separate. And so if we go to uh, Appendix D here, we take a look at barium hydroxide. Barium hydroxide is 10 to the minus 3. Which one? Calcium hydroxide is where? Is 10 to the minus 6. 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 6, three orders of magnitude difference in the hydroxides. Then we look at the sulfates. Um, barium sulfate, 10 to the minus 10. Calcium sulfate is um, 10 to the minus 6. So this is 9 times 10 to the minus 6. This is almost 10 to the minus. That's 4 to order of magnitude. It's almost 10 to the minus 5. It's like a 5 orders of magnitude, maybe, in the sulfate. But then the sulfate's less concentrated. So, you know, this, this is kind of hard to answer. So you, you could sit down and do, do 
do it to see what the percent precipitation is? Yeah, I, you know, the carbonate's probably better because it's more concentrated and then you don't have to worry about if it's too dilute, you know, because solution dilution is always a potential problem. But if there, if there can't be values that are really close, like both of the carbonates yeah, are yeah, yeah. to the negative nine, so if they're so close, are you going to be able to precipitate less because of that? Okay. Or? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, the carbonate is 10 to the minus nine. Oh, well, what was I doing? I did the sulfate. Yeah, so sulfate okay. was a very large difference. Oh, you know, actually carbonate is, carbonate would be awful. Why? Um, because immediately when one precipitates out, which one's going to precipitate out first? Well, the one with the smaller KSP, which would be calcium carbonate. Yeah. But shortly after that, um, barium carbonate would precipitate. So carbonate's not good. I would do sulfate because the, uh, the KSPs are too close together. Um, uh -huh. For the fractional precipitation of um, uh, chromate and uh, aerolate, it was like bromide and chloride in the example. Yes. The KSPs are so close, but why are they effective in chloride? Kind of chloride and bromide of what? Silver? Silver chloride and bromide? No, it was like silver, uh, it was silver bromide and silver chromate. Oh, silver chromate and, oh, this, the KSP comparison only works if they split the same way. If they don't split the same way, you cannot compare the KSPs. Um, you know, silver chromate and silver bromide, you know, silver chromate has two silvers and one chromate. Uh, whereas silver, um, what was it, bromine? Yes. Oh, is a one to one, and so this, the the way it works is is totally different. You cannot compare the two KSPs because they split in a different pattern. Oh. You can compare the two KSPs here because they both split in the same pattern. Uh, that is uh, in a, a two to one. You know, two silver, 